Steve Jobs died of pancreatic cancer. No matter how smart and innovative you are, how rich and powerful you are, or how nice you are, cancer can strike. You know what's even more scary? There are no obvious causes for many cancers, so we can't do much to prevent them. Cancer seems totally random. If we get it, we get it. There have been millions of scientists and researchers around the world working on curing cancer for ages. So why haven't succeeded? In order to cure cancer, we first need to detect cancer. And in order to detect cancer, we need to find something either that comes from the cancer cells or that changes because of the presence of cancer, something clearly different from healthy people. However, we have three major problems here. Subtlety, rarity, and heterogeneity. First is subtlety. Cancer is very tricky because it's not foreign, like bacteria or viruses that come from outside of our body. Cancer is made from our body, from our own cells. So cancer is only slightly different from the materials that we have in our body, which is the first issue, subtlety. The second is rarity. Even though cancer is very lethal to our body, its cell volume is tiny compared to our body size. So there's not much cancer material compared to healthy materials that we have in our body, which makes it very hard to find rare cancer signatures in the presence of so much healthy background. That's the second issue, rarity. So it's finding a needle in a haystack problem. But do you know what makes it even worse? Cancer cells from a patient are slightly different from each other. And at the same time, cancer cells from one patient are also slightly different from cancer cells from the other patients because we are all slightly different from each other even though we're all human beings. This is the third issue, heterogeneity. So we need to find needles in a haystack, but some needles are short, long, red, gray, or even unknown colors, which further complicates cancer detection. I'm a bioengineer by training who wants to solve clinically important problems. I'm building tools that can help me find cancer signatures from our body. It needs to be exactly the right tool to be useful. Here's what I mean. If you want to grab food that's in front of you, what would you do? Use your hands, a fork, or a spoon to pick it up. And it's quite easy because the food, piece of food you want to pick up matches your utensils in size. But when the scale doesn't match, there's a problem. If you want to pick up a whole watermelon using your teaspoon, it doesn't really work. If you want to pick up a single grain of salt using your fork, that doesn't work either. This is also true for my research. If I'm looking for tiny cancer cells or cancer materials, I need to use a tool that matches their sizes so that I can easily manipulate them. I'm looking for cancer materials in the blood rather than using imaging technologies like MRI or CT scan. In order to be detected by imaging, a cancer has to be a certain size to be visible. But cancers like pancreatic cancer by the time the cancer grows into a detectable size, it's already too late because it spreads to all different parts of the body. That's called metastasis, which is responsible for 90% of cancer patient death. This is why I'm looking for cancer signatures in the blood to find molecular changes as early as possible. What I'm looking for in the blood are called extracellular vesicles, or nanovesicles. They are shed by cells found in the blood, and they contain molecular information from their cells of origin. And there are several reasons that I'm interested in using these nanovesicles as a material for early cancer detection. First, while there are just hundreds of cancer cells in the blood, among billions of other healthy blood cells, and even fewer at an early stage of cancer, one cell can produce thousands of nanovesicles, which means that we can find a lot more nanovesicles than we can find cancer cells from the blood. Second, not all patients have cancer cells in the blood. 
In those cases, we need to perform biopsy, inserting a needle into an organ to take tissue out of it, which is uncomfortable and invasive. When we use nanovesicles, we don't have to worry about that because they're easily found in the blood, even when cancer cells are not. So no biopsy required. And of course, my goal is to find cancer signatures as early as possible, even before cancer formation, which means that I cannot use cancer cells because they don't exist yet. But these nanovesicles are easily found due to the environment change that comes prior to cancer formation or shed by precancerous cells, which we can use to detect cancer. So all these reasons tell us that nanovesicles are a God-given gift for early cancer detection. So why aren't we using them for detection already? Well, we've been trying, and it's been very hard, because nanovesicles are very, very small. A cell is 10 times smaller than a single grain of salt, and a nanovesicle is 1,000 times smaller than a cell. This is why we need a special tiny tool that can help us pick up these small nanovesicles from the blood. Did you have cappuccino in the morning or a beer last night? Do you remember the foam on top? That foam is made of tiny little droplets, and that's my tool. I make droplets, very uniform and very small droplets, 10 times smaller than a single grain of salt. Our field is called droplet microfluidics. We manipulate microliter volumes of fluids in immiscible phases that do not mix each other, like water and oil, to make droplets. Water comes from one channel, and oil pinches of water continuously so that it can keep generating very small and very uniform droplets. When we change water to blood, we can make blood droplets, and when we dilute the blood enough, we can achieve the probability of having one nanovesicle in each droplet for individual nanovesicle encapsulation. Using this approach, I'm trying to solve our needles in a haystack problem. What would you do if you need to sort around 100 needles in a billion pieces of hay and your needles are slightly different from each other? What if there's a machine they can automatically grab each hay or a needle at a time and put into each small jar, when it, and when it's done with the sorting process, only the jars that contain the needles can light up so that we can easily identify them. Wouldn't it be really nice? The droplet generating device that I make does this for me so that I can find cancer signatures in the presence of so much healthy background. It can produce thousands of droplets per second, and within a few hours, we can detect the cancer signatures. What you see in the video are individual beads in individual droplets, and beads are used for visualization because they're 1,000 times bigger than nanovesicles. Now you see how small nanovesicles can be. And the device that I'm running here is actually less than half the size of your pinky fingernail. I'm using this tool to solve three major problems in detecting cancer. I can solve the rarity issue by removing the vast background of healthy nanovesicles from cancer nanovesicles after compartmentalizing individual nanovesicles in each droplet. I can also solve the heterogeneity issue by identifying each of them rather than measuring in bulk. Bulk measurement is easier because the signal is a lot stronger than the signal from each individual nanovesicle, but we lose very important information that comes from rare types of nanovesicles because the bulk signal is highly dominated by the most common types of nanovesicles. We still have one remaining issue to solve, which is subtlety. This is the most challenging problem because already a subtle signal can become even more weak when nanovesicles are measured individually. In order to solve this subtlety problem while addressing the rarity and heterogeneity issues, I've been developing ultra-high sensitive technology 
that can amplify the signal from each individual cancer nanovesicle by 10,000 times so that we can achieve measurement at a single nanovesicle level. I've been using various signal amplification methods that can generate thousands of RNA or DNA from a single DNA copy. It's similar to having an original object and replicating for thousands of times, and you end up having thousands of the same item. This process is performed in droplets, and it only happens in cancer nanovesicle containing droplets so that only they can light up or be sorted for further analysis. Using this highly sensitive technology, I'm looking for early, pen, uh, early cancer signatures derived from small malignant tumor or before cancer formation. This has a high potential to save human lives. The five-year survival rates of stage zero and one breast cancer, prostate cancer, and melanoma, which is a skin cancer, is around 95% which means that if you have that cancers, and if these cancers are detected early, almost every one of you can survive. Colorectal cancer, cervical cancer, and even brain cancer also have so much better chances of survival when detected and treated early. Using a mouse model, I have shown that we can detect early pancreatic cancer signatures, whereas mice only have precancerous lesions in their pancreas, that have not yet fully developed a pancreatic cancer. I was so excited about this result because pancreatic cancer has the most terrible five-year survival rate of 5%, but it can be increased by six times if detected and treated early. This technology can be used for more than early cancer detection. It can also be used to monitor therapy response and better improve and predict patient outcomes. I am very excited about immunotherapy, which is a new type of cancer treatment that helps your immune system to fight cancer. It's very intriguing because it has been highly successful in a subset of cancer patients that were previously incurable, but the remainder do not respond to the therapy at all. This is why we need a good diagnostic that can help us better understand this bifurcated outcome and be able to predict the non-responders for the best possible treatment decision. If we can detect cancer at an early stage and provide better guidance on current cancer therapies, we can save so many more people than we can right now. We can identify cancer patients before their tumors spread to all different parts of the body. Cancer patients will be able to have their tumors removed and be in complete remission after the surgery. We can also provide highly efficacious therapy tailored to each individual patient for the best possible treatment outcome. I'm very hopeful about our future, and we all, as scientists, will make it happen. Thank you.